Hey kids, thought I'd put together a video today of uh, kind of what it's really like to be heading down the ICW here through Florida, through Central Florida anyway. It does change depending on where you are in the ICW. There are some places that are, well, dismal, <laughs> swampy and, uh, and heavily wooded and, and, and that's okay. I kind of like being in the woods, the back country. And then, you know, so you have scenery kind of like that along the side. Although there are some places where it's fairly narrow. This area where I'm at here in Central Florida, the ICW is very wide. I'm actually in the Indian River here. So it's, uh, it's a very wide area. So as we're traveling, we're constantly looking for navigation beacons. There's red number 40. Keep red on the right as you're heading south. Over there, you can see there's a green, greenish yellow one. Keep those over to over to uh, port. Keep the red over to starboard as you're heading south. So it's constantly a game of trying to find these navigation beacons up in front of you and trying to stay between the beacons. You could theoretically do the entire ICW without any electronics, without any assistance whatsoever, just following those beacons. But I will tell you, there are lots of places where those beacons are few and far between. In fact, if I didn't keep a good pair of binos close at hand, I would not have known where the next beacon was quite often. They're just that far away sometimes, they're hard to see. And of course, the channel's not straight, you know, it's a river or it's a channel or whatever it is. It's a waterway of some kind or they, you know, they snake and turn and whatever. So. Some places along the ICW are residential, like you see over here. Bunch of nice houses with fancy docks, and I don't see a lot of good boats over there. A lot of them, you'll see all kinds of fancy boats uh, hanging out behind the houses and stuff. Down here in Florida, you see a lot of uh, houses with screening around them. That's to protect, obviously, the occupants from the mosquitoes that are prevalent in this area. I know sleeping on the boat, I get eaten up. Um, probably got three or four new mosquito bites last night alone. So, anyhow, uh, you always got to be looking out for things floating in the waterway. There's all kinds of hazards out here. Um, there are big ships coming and going. You've got to be careful of the big ships coming and going sometimes. Um, some parts of the ICW, there's nothing but, you know, pleasure craft and that kind of stuff. But when you get around all of the inlets, you'll have a lot of commercial traffic and some of that commercial traffic can be absolutely huge. Some huge shipping containers, uh, ships and that kind of stuff. So you always got to be keeping an eye out for that kind of stuff. And if there's any place where there are shipping containers, when they're being loaded and unloaded, there's always the possibility that a shipping container could fall into the water. I've seen shipping containers in the water along the ICW. Now they were at the inlets where the shipping containers were being worked on and what have you. They're not everywhere in the ICW, but they're, they are there. There's also sunken boats. The other day I went to go through a bridge opening. It was a very narrow bridge opening. There was a sailboat mast sticking up right back in front of the opening to the bridge. So you run into that stuff. You gotta pay attention when you're out here. When you're on the ICW, you've gotta be, someone's gotta be at the wheel. You can't be asleep at the wheel here. Someone's gotta be paying attention to what's going on. And there's a Mylar balloon floating out here in the water. I'm gonna to try to net out. So you'll get to watch as I do it. I think it's a Mylar balloon. I don't know, maybe it's a thing of pot. Who knows? We'll see here in just a minute. Slow down. Anyhow, you go on my head while I get the net out. Something blue floating out here. A life vest. Oh, get down. It's a life preserver. Oh, there we go, a life preserver. You gotta be up on deck taking care of stuff, paying attention. And you wanna be, because it's really scenic. 
you know it's really scenic you got a bunch of birds going by like there's a bunch of birds going by right there a bunch of pelicans you know and you look for disturbances in the water like right over there a second ago there was a disturbance in the water it looked like something was moving under yeah right there you could see a disturbance in the water you got to watch out for those in front of you all the time because there's a lot of manatees out here. You don't want to run over a manatee. I believe I've bumped a manatee once or twice so far. I haven't been going fast enough to hurt them any, but, and I didn't hit them with the propeller. They were hit with the, the, the keel, I believe. But, um, you know, you always got to be concerned about that while you're moving along. So you're looking for disturbances out in the water. It could be a manatee. You're looking for anything floating out in the water. You got to pay attention. You got to pay attention. And you want to pay attention. You want to look at all the houses and see how people live. You want to check out the wildlife that you see. You know, dolphins will pop up at any moment, almost anywhere, without notice. You'll be driving along and all of a sudden a dolphin will jump out of the water right next to you. Scares the hell out of Miss Lily when they do that. Frankly, it scares me a couple times. Wasn't expecting it. All of a sudden, there's a dolphin right there, you know? So, I will tell you an interesting story. We were uh, in the British Virgin Islands on a Lagoon 440 catamaran that I chartered uh, uh, years ago for my television show that I did called Travelers in Paradise. And uh, we're motoring along, or actually sailing along. We were out off uh, offshore. We were fishing. We were out on the uh, on the south bank, on the Anagata Bank, um, and we were fishing along. And I'm up on the bridge deck, and I'm you know driving the boat as always. And uh, I noticed the depth finder on that boat. We were in 200, 300 feet of water, 190 feet of water. We were right at the break where the where the shelf dropped off pretty precipitously. And uh, I noticed the, uh, the depth finder was showing like 60 feet, and then 50, and then 40, and then 30. And with that, I grabbed the throttles and pulled the throttles back for fear that I was gonna run aground into something. And I'm looking around saying, now oh, what the heck? There's nothing here that I could possibly be running into the chart shows, the, the navigational chart shows I'm in 200 feet. What in the hell is going on? So, uh, yeah, see right there, there's a mast sticking out of the water right over there. You can see the top of it. Gotta pay attention. Anyhow, so I, I slowed the boat way down and I'm looking at the chart. I'm trying to figure out what happened. And with that, a whale breached about 10 feet off the starboard side of our bow. Off the starboard bow, catamaran, I had two of them. Yep, whale breached. Jumped up out of the water, went back down in. It was coming towards us. It came out, dove back in, but as it went by, I had that big eyeball looking at me. That was wild. So what it was is the whale was underneath the boat and the depth founder was pinging off the body of the whale, not off the bottom. The whale was coming up in, in uh, the water column and that's what made it look like we were getting shallow. That was a wild story. It's a wild time, but true story. Here goes a little fisherman. Anyhow, we'll have more for you here later. I'm about ready to go underneath the bridge here in Vero Beach. And uh, heading south, so we'll have more for you later, kids.